just to keep going. So everybody, Saad Di Simone, he's going to take us into meditation. Thank you. Thank you, man. Hello. Uh, so part of the reason why I started to do this work, let me just make sure I'm good on time. Fifteen minutes. Uh, it was because I also experienced uh, suicidal depression through many years of my life. So this is what set me off to actually uh, go to India and decide to deepen this practice and learn the tools to get out of that hole. So I want to share a few facts that some of you might not know. Uh, one out of five people are struggling with a mental health issue. And seven out of 10 people have experienced enough trauma growing up that they're predisposed to having a chronic illness later in life. And suicide affects 100,000 people a year. So this is just a few little nuggets of wisdom for us to remember when we're approaching a room of people, especially when we're looking at a room of 10 people. Seven out of those people have experienced enough trauma that their lives will be different than ours if you are to fragment the experience. And that's pretty scary. But thankfully, through the work of Marion Diamond at UC Berkeley in 1969 and Sarah Lazar at Harvard in 2011, we actually know that through meditation, eating clean, and exercise, we can change the plasticity of the brain. Through intentional behavior, we can change the architecture of our brain. So we can change the way our brains are wired simply by learning to sit quietly and take good care of our guts and exercising. So these are some of the tools that I've worked with uh, to get me to where I'm at now. And uh, with fur any further ado, I just want to um, talk about one last point. There's seven factors to enlightenment if you look at from a Buddhist perspective. And the very first step is mindfulness. And in this point, mindfulness simply means learning to be able to return to the object of focus. In our case tonight, it will be the breath during our meditation practice with no judgment, with compassion and kindness. Who here has meditated before? Yes. <laughs> Who has a daily practice? Beautiful. So our practice tonight will be to return to the breath. And I'm pretty sure we all are aware of the simple tool of returning to the breath over and over again. This is what we'll be doing tonight. So let's uh, take a moment to tune into our posture. So if you're sitting on the chair, I invite you to just come off the back a little bit. Beautiful. Okay. So sitting up with intentionality and grace, a posture that balances a wakefulness and relaxation. Rolling your shoulders up to your ears and letting them fall back so you create a little space in your chest. Beautiful. So to begin, we're going to uh, think of a word. This would be our intention for the practice. So take a deep breath to the bottom of your belly. And if you still have your eyes closed, I um, invite you to gently let the eyelids rest closed. Beautiful. So think of a word that represents something that you want to bring more of into your life today. And then take a deep breath and hold the breath and visualize that word at the mind's eye. And exhale audibly. Let's do that again. Deep breath to the bottom of the belly. Hold the breath. Visualize the word at the mind's eye and exhale audibly. One more time, in the bottom of the belly, hold, and audible exhale. Beautiful. Now to bring in a little bit more relaxation into the body, we're gonna go through a brief body scan. Starting at the top of the head, relaxing the forehead, relaxing the eyes, the jaw, the neck, shoulders, 
shoulders. Upper back. Lower back. The chest, the belly, the hips, upper legs. lower legs, all the way to the bottom of your feet. Now I invite you to gather your attention to the part of your body that you feel your breath most vividly today. For some, is at the tip of their nose, the upper lip, the movement of chest or belly. So wherever that space is for you today, I invite you to connect and feel a whole cycle of the breath coming in and out. The nature of the mind is to wonder. So when we become distracted by thoughts, ideas, sensations, sounds, this is our cue to return to the breath. Returning to the breath with no judgment. Breathing in, allowing the breath to nourish your whole body. Breathing out, allowing the body to relax further. Allowing the thoughts to come and go like the clouds in the sky passing by at a distance. And gently returning to the breath
each time you remember to return to the breath when the mind gets distracted. It's a moment of waking up. It's a moment of mindfulness. Enjoying these simple moments of breathing, savoring each new breath. As we gently start to bring this practice into a close, I invite you to bring back that word, that intention, and again, hold it at the mind's eye. Taking a deep breath to the bottom of the belly, visualizing that word, the mind's eye and exhale. One more time. In intention, breathing out. Now taking a moment to appreciate that this practice is an act of profound generosity, not only for yourself, to your community, but to the world at large. And gently, when you're ready, slowly open your eyes and bring your awareness back into the room. Thank you for your practice. And before I hand over the mic, I just want to bring in a little mantra. And it simply goes, darling, I'm here for you. So I invite you to look at your neighbor, perhaps on both sides, and just let them know with these words, darling, I'm here for you. And I invite you to bring this practice into your life, especially for this month of May, as this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And let people know that you're there for them. Because the only way to end the stigma is by talking about it. And it's okay to talk about it. So darling, I'm here for you.